over the past several years, I have watched uh, extensively many martial arts videos and demonstrations and tournaments and things of this sort on the internet, YouTube specifically. And uh, I've seen all of these comparisons of various arts, this art versus that art, and this art versus this other art, which one is the best. And uh, it sort of gets old after a while, and I've always wondered why people are always trying to compare what art is best uh, as, a, as it relates to fighting. And even who, in some instances, is the greater fighter. I'm not going to talk so much about who's the greater fighter uh, concept. This video is more about a particular martial arts system and that is none other than Shaolin Kung Fu. Uh, I've seen videos where people have asked the question how well would a Shaolin Kung Fu practitioner or master do against a Taekwondo fighter? Could a Shaolin practitioner or master beat a boxer? Could he beat an MMA fighter? A uh, Krav Maga fighter could a Shaolin Kung Fu practitioner or master beat most of the traditional martial arts systems and or styles practitioners if you will and my immediate answer would be no I'm gonna pause for a moment I'll let that digest there are some pro Shaolin people out there, I'm certain, even though it's not really that common of an art form here in America. In China, it's prevalent, highly advertised throughout the world now, martial arts magazines and covers and things like this. And even there is a group of guys, uh, supposedly from the Shaolin Temple, that travel the world, you know, performing. But we will get into that a little bit later in another video. But right now, the question is, how well will a Shaolin master or practitioner do against these other fighting systems? And I just said, I believe emphatically, he wouldn't do well at all. And the reason he would not do well is because he wouldn't be fighting anyone. Shaolin literally means temple in the forest. Shaolin temple. Now, many, many thousands of years ago, Shaolin temple was burned down, killing the majority of the monks. There were, however, a remnant of them that escaped and went on to live as close to a normal life as possible. Some of them taught in private, and I want to say this, the reason I initially said that a Shaolin master or practitioner would lose or would not win in a fight, I should say, they wouldn't participate in the first place. The people that we see traveling the world, and even in America, that's doing the so-called Shaolin monk performances those are not Shaolin temple students and when I say Shaolin temple I'm talking about the real deal the guys that have actually devoted their lives to training in the art of pugilism these guys are actually just performers they have high levels of physical skill gymnastic ability agility uh, flexibility they practice weaponry and some of them or all of them have studied some form of martial arts but they are not just simply martial artists per se as a matter of fact the performers that we have witnessed many of them probably wouldn't stand a chance against most professional fighters because these guys again are just performers. The real Shaolin 
practitioners and monks would never reveal themselves on a national level. You would never see them publicly display their art because they hold it sacred. I believe that there is a remnant that still does exist. But the martial arts to them is a way of life and they do not exploit their art and or themselves for public display and gratification and money. They don't do that. But the, these performers that I just mentioned do. They're not the same. So if you see someone that appears to be dressing in Shaolin garments, orange or yellow, sometimes black maybe, they're not the real Shaolin monks. These guys are highly skilled as I said, but they're not the Shaolin monks. And as I said a moment ago, I do believe that there is a remnant that still does exist. They may not even call themselves Shaolin monks any longer. They could be descendants properly, but these are people who practice, they train, and they live in seclusion away from normal society. And as I said, they don't want to exploit their art. It is part of the culture. And this is also one of the reasons why the late great Bruce Lee, martial arts master, was frowned upon by his Chinese brethren, especially the elders during the time that he lived because he was exposing some of the ancient secrets and teaching to Americans in the West. And they frowned upon that. At that particular time when Bruce Lee was here, there was a schism there was a division between Asia and America and coincidentally it's interesting how Bruce Lee brought America or the West together with Asia through his martial arts films and now it is not uncommon to see Japanese Korean and Chinese martial arts schools not only in America but all over the world thanks to Bruce Lee. So the secrecy is no longer really a secret. But I will say this and I believe this to be true. I believe that most Asian masters who are from the old school, traditional Asian masters, when they come here to America to pursue the American dream and they teach their martial arts to American students, I don't believe that they share everything. They teach only enough. There are some things that they keep within their own family, within their own culture, that they would never share with Americans. That's how devoted and entrenched in their culture they are. They still do believe that that belongs to China to Japan, to Korea, to whatever other Asian country it may be that teaches Asian martial arts here in America. They don't show everything. They don't teach everything to Americans because it was theirs before it was America's. That's really it and that's all. So again, how well would a Shaolin practitioner, a Shaolin monk, do against Taekwondo, traditional karate, whatever the style of system, boxing, MMA, whatever? How well would they do? Well, I've already stated that I don't believe that they would even exploit their own arts, but if peradventure it were to happen, all of the arts that I just mentioned would have a hard way to go against a real Shaolin master. Note that I said a real Shaolin master. But because of integrity, because of respect for oneself, because of their love for life and keeping their arts sacred, you would never ever see it happen. 
but they know what they know. You see, American fighters that are always comparing themselves to Asian fighters. Now, I'm only talking about Asia. I know about the African martial arts and other martial arts systems and styles across the planet. And it all began in Africa before it even got to Asia. Africa is the oldest civilization. So, but I'm specifically talking about Asia. But all of the guys that are in the MMA or mixed martial arts that are always selling wolf tickets about who they can beat and what system sucks and it's no good primarily they're saying that because of their ego their inflated ego and I say again I don't care how good you are anytime you start talking about someone who hasn't stepped up to the plate you probably don't want them to really step up to the plate who has the greater and the better respect for self but those who keep some things to themselves the whole world doesn't have to know everything about you that's probably just American culture we're always bragging we're always saying that we're better than this and better than that but are we really so these guys and these martial arts competitions and these tournaments that are always putting down other arts and systems why are they really there what are they doing for the martial arts absolutely positively zero they're only competing for themselves for a money purse for fame notoriety to continue to swell that big already inflated ego of theirs that's really the truth it's not about who they can beat and can't beat that was really it so I've already a answered the question can Shaolin Temple practitioners and masters beat all of the other arts you've never seen a Shaolin master step up because they have more respect for themselves I'm out